Hello. I am said Josh Holiday and I am live with a caveat. If you are listening and it's not a Friday, maybe you're listening to a podcast version of the show or a uh, replay on Saga 960, News Talk Saga 960. We are not live, but here's the good thing. The telephone line, 6476-YO-JOSH, is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can call in, and if you are hearing the show and, and it's not live, you can call in and express your beef, or if you have something you want to talk about in the show, you can call it up, and uh, you will get through, and you can leave a message, and we may air it on the following show. So there you go. But uh, if you are listening on a Friday, it is live, and you are more than welcome to call 6476-YO-JOSH. And how that works out number-wise is 647 647- Six nine six five six seven four. Uh, you can also uh, stream us at uh, Saga nine sixty AM dot CA. And uh, once this is done, it, it'll become a podcast, and uh, you can just go to that website and get a link. I am Josh Holiday. This is the very first show, the debut episode. So if uh, anything goes wrong, we can blame it on it being the first episode. This is basically the test. The live test of uh, what's going to happen here every Friday, 3 p.m., right here on Saga 960. Uh, It's a busy hour. we got to cram a lot into uh, a single hour. We'll go till 4 o'clock today. Uh, You can call anytime, or you can even text that number, 6476-YO-JOSH. Okay, that's weird. (laughs) There's already uh, a caller on the line. Well, let's see what this person has to say. Hello? Caller? Uh, hello. Hi, who's this? Yes, hello. Huh? Uh, well, huh. that's a little forward. Um, I'd like a, uh, I'd like a large, a large pizza with, um, you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and say mushrooms. Uh, black peppers. Okay, I'm, I'm going to. Uh, green peppers. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt you there. Uh, you have Scotch Bonnet. You have like Scotch Bonnet. Yeah, I do have Scotch Bonnet. I will send it to you right away. Uh, this is um, this is a, a weird thing that's been happening because uh, before this number was six four seven six Yo Josh, it belonged to a pizzeria, and I, I looked up the number, and it was a pizzeria in Clarkson, Ontario. Oh my gosh, that story. Yeah. Oh, so, I'm so, so sorry. yeah, this is a you're, you're live. I apologize. That's okay. What's that? You're live on the air. I'm live on the air. Yeah. This is a uh, this is a call-in show. It is, yeah. <laughs> so funny. Hey, and Deborah, it's a call-in show. It's not a pizza place anymore. It's not a pizza place. It's a call-in show. I'm, yeah, I'm on the air right now with uh, uh, Josh. Josh. Josh Holiday live. Yes. Josh. Where 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 are you uh where are you located? Uh I'm I'm in Wasaga Beach, Ontario. Good old Wasaga Beach. Uh yeah. What's your your name? What's your name? Uh Doris. Doris. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh That's so funny. Josh is it? Yes. I've never been on a radio show before. No, well, welcome, welcome aboard. First, uh, first time. Maybe you'll become a long time. Yeah, it's the first time for me calling. Yeah. Right. So uh, what do you do in Wasaga so Beach? How many years have you been on the air? How, how many years have you been on the air? Four minutes and 55 seconds on this show. But... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, this is a new show? This is a new show, yes. <laughs> Never, it's a new show. <laughs> it's a brand new show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'm excited to be on your first show. All right. Well, what's bugging you? Yep. What's bu- is there anything yep. bugging you that we can we can use the radio to to put out there into the the ether? Uh, what's bugging me? Uh, oh God. Yeah, I got it. Um, I have neighbors. Uh, down, like I don't want to say anybody's name. I don't. Want, I'm not like I don't. I'm not. Don't get into that public shaming thing. I know there's a lot of that going on. No, there. I have neighbors who they don't uh, they don't take their holiday decorations down at any time during the year. They just put the lights on on the ones that are like the current holiday, and it's just an eyesore. It just it brings it's depressing, and it brings like every every holiday lowered expectations. You know because you know what you're going to get every year, and it's just it's one of their crappy. <laughs> No surprises. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, no surprises. So, yeah, that bugs me. All That's right. That's bugging me. Well, Doris, uh, I want you to keep uh, being yeah. a listener, and uh, you can find us on the web, because uh, I don't think our signal reaches Wasaga Beach. Our uh, web address is saga I... saga 960 amca or you can go to Josh Holiday Live dot com and uh, you can listen to episodes or or past episodes or get information on the show. Listen, I'm not calling from what you <laughs> What? Where are you calling from? I just like to make it sound less. <laughs> I I'm in Clarkson. Ah, uh, that's funny. Like it's a little joke. <laughs> it's a little I, joke Deborah and I do. That, you I, know. I kind of wonder <laughs> Who's because. Who's with Vega Beach? I wonder because uh, the pizza place that used to have this number is a Clarkson pizza place. So I was wondering, why would you be calling yeah. a, a pizza place I thought I could get away with that one. All right. Well, I, gotta, <laughs> I didn't want to say where I was calling. All right. Well, I'm going to run along, uh, Doris, but do call back next week or, or uh, keep, on, keep on listening. I- I can call next week. You're going to be there again. We'll be there at the exact <laughs> can same you time. Send me a pizza? <laughs> yeah, I will. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye. Good now. luck, Doc. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right. So that our very first caller. Uh, what a, what a debut <laughs> that is for callers. Uh, you can be the second caller at six four seven six. Yo, Josh. Um, I have a dog, an adorable little dog, a pocket beagle named Boise, and uh, I take him for walks with an informal kind of group. We, we just kind of all happen to come to the park at the same time, and slowly we became a collection of about seven or eight people who meet up at the park around the same time and just kind of chat and walk our dogs around. And nothing formal, it just, it just sort of evolved over the years and not everyone's there every day, but, but there's a, a, a core group of people who come and walk their dogs. Earlier this week, we were walking around the park and th- there was someone who had their dog on a leash. It was, a, it's a sort of a, a woman with a, a it's sort of a, a pit bull, um, I guess bulldog combination. And basically, it, it's old and docile. And, and one of the people in our dog walking group has a, a Shih Tzu who wasn't on the leash, but not a, not a huge deal. But it went barking up to the, the big uh, uh, pit bull slash uh, bulldog type mix. And the owner went and got him, apologized. And, and the lady who owned this this, this other dog started swearing and yelling at this guy and, and a huge overreaction. And it went on for about five minutes and then we kept going on our way and, and he put his dog on a leash and, and we went to a picnic table. Then about 20 minutes later, we we're uh, sitting at this picnic table and there is, I guess about four of us and this lady shows up 
without her dog. So she, I guess, had, had gone home, taken her dog home, and uh, made it her business to come back to the park and approach us. And I recorded the video of this, and I'm going to play the audio for you in a sec. Uh, if you want to see the video, you can go to, uh, I guess you could see it at uh, my Instagram, which is unfunny. Uh, or if you go to Josh Holiday Live on Facebook, that page, it's up there as well. Two L's in holiday. So the lady came back, and uh, this is what she sounded like. Before, and it's done to other dogs because they all talk about that thing in the park. Do they talk about you? You know what? Maybe they do. And you know what Tina does? Mind her business and just hold her own. Why don't you do the same? You know why I don't do the same? Because I don't think it's funny that other dog owners, like yourself, think it's okay that you think this park is your backyard. It is not. I don't think so. Keep that thing on a lead. It has no recall, and it's nasty. It might be very sweet at home. Maybe. But it ain't a cute dog. It's not welcome in the park, off-leash, and being cute. Because it's not cute. And maybe you're not used to somebody coming up to you, putting their dog back home and finding you back in the park and calling you on your behavior. But let me tell you, I'm gonna fucking call you on it every time I see you doing it wrong. I know you don't give a shit. You're a white male, what the fuck do you care? And you're a black woman. You know what? I'm a woman. I'm further down the chain than you, so it don't matter. It's too bad you think that. <sighs> Whatever, you keep that f- little gremlin away from us. You, you just away stay away you. from us. Yeah, you know what? I don't have to stay away from you if your dogs were on leave. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I should clarify, the lady who who uh, claimed to have white, claimed, claimed that she was a victim of white privilege was a uh, uh, a blonde, pale lady. So um, it was very strange to hear her mention uh, white privilege. So, yeah. So that was that was earlier in this week. Uh, on the the rest of the show today, I'm going to get to this a little bit later in the show. Uh, I'm going to talk about, about vaccines and vaccine mandates on Saga 960. I am sandwiched between uh, two heavily anti-vax shows. So I'm, I'm kind of in the anti-vax sandwich. I'm going to come and uh, talk about that a little bit later in the show, talk about vaccine mandates and, and why they why I think they're a good thing. But I thought we would start a little bit lighter. Just ease into things before before we get into stuff that's uh, a little bit more uh, controversial. Even though it sh- it should not be controversial, it 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 is being seen as controversial. They say uh, not to talk about TV on the radio. That's an old radio rule, and I guess the assumption is, well, if if you talk about the TV, then they're not going to listen to the radio. They're just going to go watch TV, um, which is kind of ridiculous. There's not a lot of people who who sit on their couch after dinner, sit around a big radio uh, listening. It's generally done on the go or in a car or while you're relaxing. Uh, and it, but if the pandemic did anything, I think it's uh, showed us what's on TV, and that we're truly in a golden age of television. It feels like the Tiger King was about ten years ago. Feels like that show debuted about 10 years ago, but it was just at the beginning of the pandemic. That's that's how 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 long ago it was. And uh, there's been all kinds of of shows that have hit over the pandemic. Uh, more recently, uh, Squid Game, which is like a, an extended episode of of Black Mirror, the Korean show. Quite interesting. Uh, Queen's Gambit was another one that broke through in the pandemic. Uh, Bridgerton, I'm not really a, a big fan, but it certainly had a lot of success pandemic-wise. And the uh, TV show Succession, which actually returns uh, this Sunday night. Looking very looking very much forward to that. But I wanted to do uh, today is to highlight some of the under-the-radar gems. And uh, you can call me with yours as well. You can uh, uh, call me at 6476-YO-JOSH. If you want to tell people about a television show that maybe was under the radar, but is worth checking out. Looking for quality shows that people may have missed out on and you can recommend. 
I uh, I really liked White Lotus, though now, at this point, now that it's been out for a while, I wouldn't call it under the radar. But if you haven't seen it, I would definitely suggest checking it out. It's uh, an HBO show. And if you liked White Lotus, you may want to go back down the HBO rabbit hole and check out a show called Enlightened. It's the same creator, writer, director, Mike White, who is responsible for White Lotus. And he did a show a few years ago. There were two seasons of it. It stars uh, uh, Laura, no, shoot, Laura, Lenny, Laura Lenny as uh, a woman who has a breakdown at work and then goes and seeks sort of new age help and comes back trying to uh, take over the world. You'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it if you liked White Lotus. But uh, we're here to talk about shows that were under the radar, shows that maybe you missed out on but you should check out. And uh, I'm here to suggest a few you can call in if you have others that you want to suggest. One of the ones that I watched, uh, I believe it was early on in the pandemic, and it was on Netflix. I passed by it a bunch of times while I was scrolling through because the title didn't really have appeal to me. The show is called Giri Haji. Giri slash Haji. It's a Japanese-British co-production, and Giri Haji translates to duty, shame. And I think they made a mistake by giving it that title, because it doesn't really tell uh, North American audiences anyway what the show is about, and, and people might just skip on by. But it's rated 100% positive on Rotten Tomatoes, which is a, a website that takes critics from around the world and takes all of their reviews and puts them all together and comes up with one percentage number of positive reviews. This one is 100% positive. British-Japanese co-production about a Tokyo detective gets into the the underworld uh, gang, the under, underground Yakuza gang world in uh, in Japan, but also takes place partly in uh, in England and it's in English and in Japanese, and, and there are subtitles, so uh, you won't have a problem with that. But that's one that, that I've mentioned to a lot of people who had no idea, and, and I think it's, it's one of the most, um, the most missed shows in terms of being a, a really, really solid show that, that's flown totally under the radar. Another show from a, a few years ago that I find very, very funny is called Sally Forever. It's Sally and then the number four and then ever, all one word. Another HBO show comes from England, and it's pretty much a, a one-woman creation. Julia Davis created it. It's 97% positive on Rotten Tomatoes. And it's one of those shows that I actually laugh out loud to sitting alone on my couch in front of the television. Usually I'll laugh inside, but this one really really made me laugh a lot and it's it's uh it's pretty risque the comedy some of it's dark some of it's very body b-a-w-d-y in nature but it's it's a show worth checking out another one that that i discovered more recently that for me has flown under the radar is on apple plus tv it's called for all mankind and it basically is one of those shows that reimagines history. What if this happened? How would things change? How would history be changed? What would happen going forward? In this case, it imagines the space race and what it ha- what would happen if Russia was first to put a man on the moon and the U.S. was following behind and then the great space race between the two, how that would change. And it fictionalizes a lot of, a lot of things that um, that happened and, and, and it, it changes the progression of, of, uh, what's, of what's sort of happening as things go forward. And it's a great period piece. The first season takes place in uh, the late 60s. The uh, second season picks it up in the early 80s. And the period stuff is great. Scenery, 
the uh, clothing, ev- everything is is great. The other thing that's ki- uh, quite clever is they take old news footage and they manipulate it so that big characters, say your your Ronald Reagans or, or or people in the news at the time, actually talk about fictional events that are happening in the show. You can uh, you can check that out on Apple Plus TV. And and even for someone who like I was never a big space junkie. I was, it wasn't really like, Oh my God, the space, uh, and not, not a huge, even science fiction guy, but the show was quite compelling. I thought, is there a show or shows that you believe should get more attention? Shows that are maybe under the radar quality shows that you would like to uh, try and check out. You can call us here at six, four, seven, six, yo, Josh, and let us know. I uh, I will admit, I'm a bit of a sucker for uh, dating shows, even the trashy ones. I, I think it's a way of me living a vicarious romantic life through television. Uh, there's a there's um, <laughs> there's a new one on uh, on Canadian TV called Bachelor in Paradise Canada, and it's basically a knockoff of the U.S. version. It's I mean it, it's licensed from the same people but it's it feels cheaper and it uh <laughs> it's interesting uh if there's ever a fire up in that northern ontario resort they are in good hands because i think half of the guys are firefighters and the other half seem to list themselves as as models now modeling i think used to be you got paid to be a model. Now it feels like if someone other than yourself takes a picture of you, you're a model. The other thing I find kind of disappointing about the the Canadian version of this show is some of the Canadian women are I'm trying to think of the word. Feel very kind of rural maybe. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to try to say, but very kind of trashy kind of giving you know, we have a, 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 a most Canadian women are are, are smart, and uh, I these the women they have on here aren't great representatives of of Canadian women. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, the other thing I, I find funny about this show is they have a uh, a bartender guy who's supposed to be the giving you advice and leading you through the show type thing. And he has been on previous seasons of of The Bachelor. And I've always said he rides a very, very fine line. It's a very fine line between being a handsome, handsome guy or being a Cro-Magnon man. And he's just this side of Cro-Magnon where he's actually handsome. But if you look closely, like he, one step further, and he would be a, a... Crow Magnon Man. So that's that show. Uh, actual good dating shows. There's a couple. Uh, dating in the Dark was one that I thought was uh, pretty well done, and it was a bit of a, a pandemic hit. There's a newer one on Netflix called Sexy Beasts, where essentially it's one person, a man or a woman, gets set up with three suitors, and all four of them are in heavy, heavy prosthetic makeup. So you can't really know what they look like underneath. Though you can see that their bodies are pretty hot. So that's that sort of immediately takes takes away that mystery. And the other thing that, that I find is it's pretty disingenuous in terms of, of people finding romance because they bring people from, say, Boston in the U.S. and northern England and they go on these dates in, in and around London. And essentially the chances of them ever continuing with a romance are, are near zero because they're so so far away. But I do like to watch it because I'm a bit of a, a special effects makeup nerd. And uh, I like to sort of see if I can guess what the people look like before they, before they reveal. One dating show that stands high above the others for me and brings me all kinds of joy, really pure joy, is on Netflix. It's an Australian show called Dating on the Spectrum. 
And I know the title sounds really high concept and maybe exploitative, but uh, not so. It's it's a very gently done show. Uh, it's people on the autism spectrum. The parents are, I love the parents. They're also very kind. And they basically set up uh, people on the spectrum, the autism spectrum, with each other to uh, have dates. And you root so hard for these people to find love. And, and it really is just, just a joy of a show to watch. It's called Dating on the Spectrum. If you have uh, uh, hidden gem shows that you want to recommend or that you like, you can give us a call, 6476-YO-JOSH, and uh, we will put your suggestions on the air. You all know that thing you use to send text. It works for actual mouth talking. Josh stuff, Josh stuff, more Josh stuff, Josh stuff, more Josh stuff. Get in on the conversation. Punch 647-6-YO-JOSH to be heard. Talk that rocks. Josh Holiday live. Yes, we are live. Unless it's not a Friday, in which case we are not live. But if you're hearing this, you are more than welcome to call the telephone number 6476-YO-JOSH, 6476965674, and uh, voice your opinion. Whether it's positive, negative, mad, or you have something you want want us to talk about in the show, you want to come on and rant, you can do that. You're more than welcome. I told you I was going to get to this, and, and now I am. <laughs> I, I want to talk about vaccines, because I, I know I'm a, a, a very solitary voice. Well, maybe not totally solitary. There's There's the morning show here, but there's a lot of anti-vax talk here on on uh, News Talk Saga 960. And I am pro-vax. Yeah. I think vaccines are great. It's a miracle. I was ready to take it as soon as it was, as soon as it came out. I was like, let's do this. Let's get back to normal. Um, Canada has, has a lot of anti-vaxxers, but the U.S. is, is a total mess. I remember saying during the uh, George W. Bush administration when they were making all kinds of cuts to education, cuts and changes, I thought, this is going to end up breeding more Republican voters. Less educated, more likely to vote Republican. And, in general, vote against their own self-interest. Though I never in a million years could have imagined the mess that's happening there now the Donald Trump movement and in everything that's that's spawned. And when we look at the anti-vax movement, I think there's a couple of things we have to to keep in mind. Here in Canada, especially, it's a very vocal minority, but it's definitely a minority. We we have a very high vaccination rate compared to the rest of the world. But you wouldn't know it by how loud and proud the anti-vax crowd is. There's a lot of them who are very outspoken, a very vocal minority. And I think this can be explained by science. And now this is where it gets tricky because these people don't want to believe science, but there's a couple of studies that tell us why anti-vaxxers do what they do and, and, and basically the root of, of, their beliefs. First of all is the most outspoken people know the least, but think they know the most. And that's according to science. There's, there's a study that says that uh, people with the most extreme opinions are usually the most uninformed on the subject. So right away you can, you can say, yeah, that's, that's the anti-vaxxer movement. It's the Dunning Kruger effect. Dunning-Kruger effect, it's, it's, it was a scientific study, and they came up with this, this, this uh, Dunning-Kruger effect, but I can break it down into, into this. People who are very vocal about a topic usually are the least knowledgeable about that topic, but they're not smart enough to know they don't know enough. Does that make sense? 
So they're not not really that bright, but they don't know they're not bright enough to know that they're not bright enough to understand complex issues like like science and immunology and 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 viruses and vaccines and essentially science. And there's another study that came out recently that essentially said that people who believe conspiracy theories show a lack of critical thinking. It says the researchers found that those who scored lower on, on the test were more likely to agree with statements such as certain significant events have been the result of the activity of a small group who secretly manipulate world events. And the power held by heads of state is second to that of small unknown groups who really control world politics. And they say two things can be learned from our, our two studies. First, the more people believe in conspiracy theories, the worse they perform on a critical thinking ability test. This test is characterized by an open-ended format, highlighting several areas of critical thinking ability in the context of argumentation. And that's in, in SciPost. So that, that helps explain the psychology behind people who are pushing cons- uh, conspiracy theories. There's, there's certainly some anti-vaxxers who are are a little less extreme, but there's a lot of them who, who, who believe this is some kind of, of plot by outsiders or within the government. There's, there's some, some motives behind the millions and millions of, of scientific experts who are trying to uh, get people healthy. And we're in a situation where there's actually two viruses. There's COVID-19 and all of its all of its forms spreading fairly rapidly and there's a virus called misinformation basically the vi- virulent spread of completely false or misleading information and it's certainly not helped by social media sites like Facebook who in order to keep their users logged in more, will keep feeding them stuff they're interested in. So say you're an anti-vaxxer or a conspiracy theorist type, and you look at those posts on Facebook, Facebook will see that you've done that, and they'll fill your feed with more and more of that same misinformation. And the anti-vaxxers want to believe they're like, they want to believe it's a conspiracy. They want to believe there's something, something out of the ordinary going on. These are the same type of people who, when studies came out back in the the fifties and sixties that said smoking is bad for you. 99,999 out of, a thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine out of a thousand doc nine hundred and ninety-nine of a thousand doctors say that smoking is bad for you. There's one doctor who says, ah no, nah, go ahead and smoke. These are the same people who would say, Well, we gotta listen to that one guy. Sir Benson and his assistant, Mr. Hedges. And the other thing you notice about the the the, the pandemic, and, and this is where looking at the, the map of the U.S. can help. You can see where the most amount of, of death is in the states. And it's in places where there are high idiot populations. Places where people don't want to wear masks. They don't want to social distance. They don't want to get vaccines. Coincidentally, those are the places where the virus is hitting hardest, where people are are dying, where the most amount of deaths are. And how people can't connect those two is is kind of frightening. There's a mandate here in Ontario that uh, certain places require a, a vaccine proof and, and, and your idea to get into into restaurants and venues here in, in, in Ontario. And Doug Ford has basically been behind at every step of the way. I'm sure he's thankful for Jason Kenney to take the heat away from him and, and make him the second worst 
premier in the country. But uh, Doug Ford's been behind all the way, and, and he reluctantly decided he was going to have uh, vaccine vaccine mandates. And not just mandates, but but require vaccines to do things. I thought it was kind of weird that he went ahead and allowed full sports arena, so up to 19,000 people in a sports arena. And yet restaurants and, and, and even our rec hockey leagues, the little rinks around town where we, we want to play, they they don't allow full team capacity in a lot of the places. So it seemed weird and, and pandering that he would, he would open up, up wide for large arenas. And I watched, well, every Leafs game, unfortunately. And I did notice it was really kind of disappointing to see how many people in the giant throng were maskless. I understand if you're having a snack or a drink, but but it just seemed like very, very few people had, had masks on in such a huge crowd. So even if you're fully vaxxed, it, it, just, it just feels like not the right thing. And this weekend, if you if you're, have a birthday in the first three or four months of the year, as of today, you can go on a, uh, and get your, your vaccine um, QR code get into bars and restaurants. Uh, the middle four months will be tomorrow and then uh, Sunday, the last four months of the year. And uh, Doug Ford, I, I read an article where already he's kind of seeming to get a little soft on the uh, requirements for, for, for showing a, a vaccine requirement for, for getting into restaurants. He's basically sort of hinted at, well, you know, we may end up making it not mandatory, which is such a Ford thing. I think, I think really think at this point, he's desperate and pandering to a shrinking base. And I don't know if you've seen any of, of his, uh, his daughter's social media posts, but his, his daughter is a major anti-vaxxer. So you can't help but think that he's getting pressure at home to kind of relax things so his daughter can live her normal life. The irony is people who want everything to open up the most, who are so, let's get back, let's just get back to normal, let's get back to business, don't want to do the things that are going to make it easier and quicker to get back to business. The anti-vaxxers are the dum-dums that are slowing it down for everyone else. Not the smartest people. Decisions have consequences and know your freedoms are not being taken away. If you want to comment, you can give us a call here at 6476-YO-JOSH, 647-696-5674. Take your calls and have more Vax talk right after this. Something bugging you? Need a vent? Where the f is Josh? This is your unfiltered megaphone. When you hear him, you're like, what? Dial 6476-YO-JOSH now to be heard. Talk that rocks. 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 Josh Holliday, live. Yes, it is Josh Holliday, live. I have a call here. This is Martina. Yes, go ahead. Martina? Yes, Martin. Martin like a bird. Oh, I said Martina on the on the thing. <laughs> How are you, Martin? Yes. And um okay, I would like to a little bit discuss uh, more about this uh, vaccination. Okay. Um just to start from the get go. Uh, two points I have to uh, bring up, and one is that I am not anti-vaxxer. Okay. I'm absolutely not anti-vaxxer. I'm actually uh, truly a pro-good uh, vaccines, like polio and other things, right? Like they are lasting, uh, long-lasting vaccines. 
by uh, own admission by Pfizer, they are saying that their vaccine is lasting like for seven months or so, and then you have to have a booster. Mm -hmm. But that's not a real vaccine. Okay, so that's not vaccine. Let's not call it vaccine. Vaccine is the one which is lasting and is preventing you from contracting the whatever virus or disease or spreading it to others. Okay, right. that's okay. real vaccine. Okay, so, let me just let me just talk, let me just talk to that point for a sec. So essentially, what you're saying is is most of the older vaccines, polio in 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 those types of vaccines, it's one and done. It's a lifetime thing, but in this case. We're right in the midst of, of the vaccine, polio and, and, and a lot of the, the other vaccines that we take. Those diseases haven't been around for a while. They've, they've essentially, vaccines help quell them. But as it is now, because not enough people are getting vaccines, the virus is mutating in real time. And so they have to adjust the vaccines in real time to keep up with the spread of the virus and, and the mutations of the virus. So it's going to be like that for a while as in, until we can finally get everyone on the same page in, in terms of vaccine. So what, what is your next point? Okay. My next point is that uh, according to the officially uh, announced uh, symptoms of uh, this uh, virus, I actually uh, was going back and I recognized that I did have actually this virus in November of 2019. So it, before it was officially pronounced or proclaimed as a uh, pandemic uh, around the world by WHO or by Canadian or Ontario governments. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I did have Evers for five weeks. I was keeping working. I contracted it actually in the office. Uh, where the drivers are coming from the west coast of US of A, okay? Mm -hmm. So it was going around, uh, and I thought it, I didn't know it would be this uh, this virus, this special COVID virus. I thought it was just flu, okay? Yeah. So I had fever for five weeks. I had actually pink eye. I did have a rashes, and it was really, and I had a terrible, terrible cold. Oh, you know, oh, that kind of Okay, kind of can, I ask you a can I ask you a question, though? Uh, do you know for sure that it was it was it was COVID? That have you have you been tested? Have you shown that you have antibodies, or could it have been been the flu? Because I know I, I in December I was very very sick, but I got COVID tested and and no there was there was nothing. So uh, did you get tested to see if you actually no, had I, it? No, no, guys, I did not get tested for that one. But you know what? It was very very strange to me because I am never sick. Okay, I am never getting even the flu. Mm. So it was very strange to me. And, uh, okay, ever since, okay, I didn't get vaccinated, but then I was stumbling over things like, uh, okay, I can see there was a terrible situation in India, mm -hmm. and uh, the biggest state in India was uh, dealing with uh, their, their pandemic over there, this uh, Delta virus, probably, because the Delta variant, uh, with uh, not vaccines or whatever we call it, vaccines, quote, end quote, uh, but uh, they were using this ivermectin, and it was working absolutely beautifully, even people yeah, I, who I, are already... I, yeah, I'm going I'm to cut you off there. Uh, ivermectin has been shown in study after study after study not to be effective against the vaccine. Um, so I don't want to, don't want to have, you, I appreciate the call, Martin, but, but that's information, that's misinformation. And, uh, I posted recently a BBC article showing that almost every study about the, the effectiveness of, uh, Invermectin has been flawed, uh, in their method, methodology. So, so, uh, I do appreciate the call, but, uh, but I'm going to, going to let it go there. Uh, oop. uh, Okay. Caller, you're on the air. It says circle. I don't know why it says circle, but but you're calling from Etobicoke. What what was your name? Hello. Are you there? Okay, someone's on the line. <laughs> At nine nine four eight number, but uh, okay. We'll, we'll, oh, are you there? Cannot hear you. Okay, well that's all right. If uh, if you if you speak, we'll hear you. If you don't, that's okay too. Uh, I want us to talk a little bit about um, there's two groups of people that, that are really frustrating when it comes to uh, the anti-vax movement. One, one is uh, there's actually a silver lining. Uh, there's a lot of police, more so in the States, but, but some here that are saying, well, we're going to quit our jobs. We're not going to be policemen anymore if we have to get this damn vaccine. And I say, well, that's that's great. 
we kill two birds with one stone. We get get the anti vaxxers uh, out of out of the service and ex- less exposed to people, but we also get rid of the bad cops because most bad cops are anti vax, and so if we if we can get them off the force, that's good. And and there is a a, a kissing cousins white supremacy and anti vax is sort of a kissing cousins movement. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if we got the caller back. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. Hello. Hello. Okay. We're having trouble getting the call through. I will try something different here. Uh, I think we dropped the, dropped the line. Okay. I, I feel terrible to do this, but, uh, we lost our, our, our call connection. So, uh, I'm not avoiding your call, but, but please, um, if you want to call back after the, after the show ends in, in about five minutes, you can, and, uh, I'll leave a message and I'll definitely play it on the next show. I, I really appreciate the call. Six, four, seven, six, yo, Josh. And as I mentioned, that number is available 24 seven. You can leave a, a, a message on there and I will get them ready for the next show. Uh, this one is, is winding down rather quickly. Uh, we are, are almost at the end of our show. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, the, the other group that that I think is is ridiculous that they're anti anti vax is healthcare workers. If you're if you're anti vax and you're in healthcare, you're in the wrong you're in the wrong profession. I'm sorry. You can't you can't be anti vax and be in the medical profession. That's a science profession. It's a, a profession that that deals with people getting healthy. And if you're anti vax, <laughs> none of those things apply to each other. Anyway, my name is Josh Holiday. This has been Josh Holiday Live. We're back here next week at uh, 3 o'clock every Friday. And you can catch a repeat of the, of the show on uh, Saga 960. And it'll also be available as a podcast at joshholidaylive.com. Uh, really appreciate the tune in. And we will see you next week. Open the shades. The show's over, but the conversation continues. On Twitter at Josh Holiday, on the web at joshholidaylive.com, and hear missed episodes on your favorite podcatcher. Talk that rocks. Josh Holiday Live.